Scientists armed with data from two different satellite missions have solved a 30-year-old mystery involving the Earth's magnetosphere. That's the magnetic shield surrounding Earth that protects us from much of the sun's space weather. In a paper published in the journal Nature, scientists at Berkeley and Lockheed Martin have found that Earth's magnetic shield is a bit drafty, kind of like a house with a window stuck open. The magnetosphere blocks the brunt of space storms sent our way by the sun, but some electrically charged particles manage to slip through its cracks, even during periods of quiet space weather. A small portion of this solar material called plasma can enter through a crack in the magnetosphere and follow a magnetic field line toward Earth, falling like a waterfall downward and splashing onto Earth's ionosphere. This waterfall creates a spot in the proton aurora, a type of aurora not visible to the human eye, but is to instruments sensitive to ultraviolet light. These observations are blowing everybody's minds. They are fundamentally changing the way we look at how plasma interacts with the, uh, with the magnetosphere. Satellites passing through this stream have detected this crack before, but their data didn't offer evidence as to how long these cracks might remain open. It was thought that these cracks might open and shut very quickly, perhaps staying open for only eight minutes at a time. Well, the European Space Agency's four spacecraft constellation called Cluster and NASA's spacecraft called IMAGE were able to provide the link space physicists were looking for. The combination of the cluster observations of the particles with the splashes seen in ultraviolet by image allowed us to identify this large spot with the stream of solar wind coming through the crack. And then once we saw that stream and had identified that optical signature, we saw that it lasted for hours. And that is the new piece of physics. This new discovery about how the Earth's magnetic shield is breached can help space physicists give better estimates of severe space weather effects, effects that can disrupt satellite communications, electrical power systems, and radio communications. From NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, I'm Mike McClare. Well, stories about dead birds in several parts of the world are still making headlines. The bird kill in Arkansas is on almost everyone's radar. No, literally, it actually shows up on radar. New at 10 tonight, THV's Lauren Clark joins us now to explain. Lauren? Well, as today our own Ed Buckner pointed out an interesting image from the radar screen taken New Year's Eve above BB when the birds fell. We took it to the National Radar, excuse me, the National Weather Service in North Little Rock to see if they could give any more information about the spot. There are some indications that we're picking up a non precipitation target. Uh, has some uh, similarities to, uh, say, like a, a collection of birds. This radar image is from around 10 p.m. New Year's Eve. And Science and operations right. officer at the National Weather Service, Chris okay. Bonanno, tells us Arkansas had lots of busy weather that particular night, but nothing after sunset. It's not uncommon to see actually birds on the radar, especially in the spring and the summertime. He estimates this spot to be between 1,300 and 1,400 feet above ground and points out how it doesn't move as most clouds or rainstorms would. Uh, when you see the higher reflectivities, that's indication of a stronger uh, or higher energy being returned to the radar. And in weather instances, usually these higher reflectivities in indicate very heavy rain or perhaps hail. And the bright color is just too strong to blame it on bugs or smoke. But Arkansas Game and Fish officials say witnesses told them the birds were flying low that night, hitting everything from cars to mailboxes. So while we know what it's not... It's not a precipitation occurring. The National Weather Service cannot definitively say what it is. And the Weather Service here in Little Rock even fielded a call from a TV station in Germany about this radar image. Liz? Very interesting, Lauren. Thank you. We'll be talking about this topic more on our shows tomorrow. On today's THV This Morning at 6.45 a.m., Arkansas Game and Fish biologist Karen Rowe explains why they say a loud noise like from fireworks is to blame. And she'll respond to some of the possible scenarios you have posted on our website and Facebook page. We'll have even more tomorrow on today's THV at 6.30.